In this video, I will be walking you through how to make floor plans step-by-step -step properly. This is Asai Yumer from Integrated BIM, and I can assure you that you miss a lot of steps because you're hurrying up with your projects or you don't know those steps. Therefore, when you have a change in the project or you're moving from one phase to another where you need to populate more details, you're struggling how to input those details. And in this video, I will be showing you how not to overload your model, but at the same time, do things properly. But if you want to learn more about level of development, LOD, or level of information needed according to ISO, LOIN, please click on the pop-up link above or link in the description below or above, depending on the platform you are in. That video will help you within 10 minutes everything you need to know about level of development and level of information needed, which is how to get most value out of your project without overpopulating and not doing something that you don't need for that particular project. The aim of these videos is to provide exclusive tips for you. So don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel because every week we're publishing a lot of content solely for you. So these videos will elevate your BIM skills, potentially your career. Therefore, don't miss any of the great video and comment below and let us know what kind of videos you want and I will do my best in order to make those videos for you. So let's jump into it. Before we get started with the floor plans, if you didn't watch the video I published earlier on about setting up the project in Revit, you need to watch that first because this video will be building on it. So in order to watch that video, you can click on the pop-up link above or click in the description below or above. So let's start with understanding why we need multiple floor plans in Revit. We have to have multiple floor plans. Right now in the basic of this template, I only have one single floor plan for a particular level. We need to have multiple of that. And I will come back in a second on that and reasoning it out. If your project template is not set up properly, please get an expert on board so you can get most out of your template because you cannot imagine how much time you're going to save in a proper template. And if you're building things each time from scratch, that's super waste of time and you are losing a lot of time and revenue for your project. So let's start with a couple of additional floor plans. One of the floor plans I love and we have, everyone has to use it, is level one work in progress. Obviously here we will not be focusing on naming conventions, so I will be just adding work in progress towards the end. By the way, I add all the shortcuts and as well as the keystrokes on the bottom right corner. So if I'm typing something or putting a shortcut in, you can watch what I'm doing from the bottom right corner. If you are doing the work in progress, I also suggest one more floor plan that will be very beneficial and that is coordination. The reason that we are having three different ones for now, we actually can have more than three. I personally prefer having four or five because I do some kind of presentation ones and I do some documentation ones and I can distinguish between them. That's why I prefer a couple of more, but right now we will just focus on a trick. So the coordination will be actually the real coordination that I'm sustaining with my consultants. This could be engineers or mechanical engineers, civil engineers, whatever, surveyors. I have those drawing inside my coordination. So I want to see how they come together with my own Revit model. If they're passing well, if there are any differences, and as well, I can see and compare how they're coming together between the consultants. I compare their drawings to see if there are any differences or they made any mistakes. I don't focus too much on that, but I also do that. So work in progress is going to be your go-to area. You will be doing all the work inside the work in progress. You are not going to modify anything in level one and level one coordination. You will use coordination to visualize things most of the time. Yeah, I mean, you can sometimes you can add and modify certain things, but I definitely suggest not to work so much on level one. That's your actual documentation. I would always keep it clean. So if I want to print it, I just go and print right away. 
or send the documentation right away. So I don't have to waste time to delete certain things or clean it up. That's why my work in progress is go to area. So what I'm going to do now is that I will start with scale first. This is the really crucial part of every single project. Don't start putting annotations or details in before you set your scale up. You need to set your scale first in all the three floor plans you have in a correct manner. I generally prefer to go a little bit more scaled up in the work in progress. So annotations and other things don't bother me as much. They are smaller. For instance, if I have my walls and if I have a room inside it, I prefer this to be scaled up a little bit more than the normal ones, so it doesn't really bother me, the tag itself. But if I go with a level one, I would like to make sure that my tag there is at the right scale. Because if I have scale like this, I want to make sure that it is not on the side or it's exactly in the middle of my room or where I would like to place it to be. I will go back a couple of steps and let's see the next thing to do. Undo it too much. We need to always make sure in the work in progress, we work with fine. So we need to see more details because if I have a wall and if it is a complicated construction, like there's hatching or it has more details, I want to see how it comes together with the next wall. So if I simply create similar and take one more wall, I want to see if I'm having some kind of awkward things like this. But in my level one, I do not have to see all those. I might just see cores, and I don't want to see all those details necessarily. So as well, what I, another thing I would like to be aware that I can change my consistent color to be showing in different color types and so forth in the level one or in the presentation view. And in the work in progress, I would like to have it black and white and in this manner. So it's more for work related documentation. So the next one is the view range. You need to make sure that your view range is set properly. By the way, before duplicating, I duplicated in the beginning just to make things a little bit more clear to you. You make sure that the level one is correctly set up first and then duplicate from there on so you don't waste the time two or three times to, or maybe even four or five times to edit things again and again doing changing the settings because most of the settings should be similar like view range. So view range in my work in progress will move all the time. I can set up view range right now, but it will really and truly moving from the back throughout the project because I would like to see different things. Maybe I have a higher window that I would like to see at some point and I will move it to the six feet high and then at some point I will put it like three feet down. So I will be changing it all the time. The most important thing over here is the coordination and level one, how you set up your view range. That's really crucial. And if you don't know about how the view range, I will just cover it very quickly. I don't want to waste everyone's time. So what I will be showing here is that if you come over here um, on a section view, and if I tail the view so I can see both views at a time, your view range is the area that you will be seeing from your cut plane all the way to the down to your level itself. So if I go to my floor plan, and then if I go to my view range, I will see that my floor plan is associated to level one. So it's associated with that level because sometimes I might call this level three. So I can rename my level one with level three. However, if I don't say yes to the corresponding view, this will be level one because I'm just changing a name. So I will show that again if I go and do it three, but I say no, now I don't have changed, meaning I might make a mess up like this. If you want to see how the plans are related, because I have seen a lot of models 
they have been relating different views to different levels and it's really confusing because they have been duplicating something from another level and they move the levels and because they didn't set the project up properly in the beginning and they are not modeling in a proper workflow. That's a big no-no. Don't do that. So if you want to see how it's associated again, click on the view range, edit, cut plan associated level. You cannot change that and that is level one regardless your name. So I will move back my level one name and I will show you the view range, how it works. You can come on the view range. Over here, you can see that the top plane, bottom plane and the view depth. So your cut plane is the line that is sitting at a certain height and you're cutting everything horizontally. And then you're looking downwards. So it means that if you have a wall that is 10 feet high, you're cutting it at four feet. And if there is a window located at a four feet, you know, like maybe the window is the sill height is three feet and the window height is five feet. So you are cutting at the four feet of the height. Therefore, it's really important to set up your right height because there will be some components might be above or maybe higher windows might be above your cut line. And therefore, you need to say primary range. What is your range going to be? I generally prefer to say it's between level two to level one. So everything in between here. And then my view depth is depend on what I need. Over here, I can say unlimited or level below. The question over here is why I need view depth is that the cut point is going to be here. My primary range is sitting in between. So if I see it, if I have anything above or below, I can see that there are some windows hidden that I'm not seeing and I'm not cutting. So that at least some I get some dashed lines or some indications that the windows are there. But if I have a view depth, for example, opening on my floor, I can look all the way down to the, maybe the entrance or the garage or whatever, maybe five story down, I can see all the way down if I want to set it up here. But if there are any windows or any primary components on the way down, which I don't see them, it will not be indicated. It's just if there is opening or there's something that's visible that you can go look all the way down. So that is the primary reasoning. If you have more questions than this, please just comment below. I will be happy to answer and maybe even make a further, another video for this, specifically focusing on the view range. So the next thing you need to focus is your location line. That is a crucial thing. Never start modeling if you don't know how to set it up or you don't set up your location line. That is a huge no-no because if you are having your wall set as a finished exterior like that and in the future you need to change the thickness of your brick or anything else so you are changing the real structural component. So let's go to the level one work in progress and let's change the, your location line is here. So I will be putting like, this is the exterior finish. So I will be putting a line over here. Uh, by the way, don't be uh, bothered with the exterior piece. Most probably this is, if I go to the section, some kind of external components, or some design for design reasons that are added inside as a, as a sweeps and reveals. So that's why it's shown beyond the exterior finish. If the exterior finish over here is going to be, I'm just locating it here. So I want, I have a boundary offset that is located somewhere over here, right? This is my side boundary. And I want my side boundary to be, let's say about three feet away from my structural finish. Let's say, I'm, this is just an example. So when we go inside the wall construction, and we change, for instance, the air, the, or in, uh, like maybe insulation area, if I change it to five inch thickness, two inch more, you can see that it is moving. My structural component is moving from them back. So I no more have three feet distance from the boundary line. So now I have two inch more. Now what I need to do is I need to move entire wall back to the original location. 
this might be repeated throughout all your walls and it's crazy difficult because you have other constraints don't do that instead try to make sure that where you need your location line that it has to be fixed is at the finish of the wall in this case you see that the finish will never move so it's over there look at it properly so what is that you don't want to move so is it the structural component is it the finish is it something else set it up as a location of the wall and then move on from that point onwards be careful with that next thing is to draw a couple of walls so let's draw just a couple of walls so we can actually go in more detail on certain things i will draw my walls like that so let me just do this okay and then i will draw another two walls some another construction so let's say ifs over here like that and like this so that's perfect now i will also split my wall with 12 inch one feet wall thickness generic model and the next thing that i would like to show you is that if you want to color code certain things for example for presentation reasons that's what i said the presentation i love to have one more floor plan that i use for presentation so if i go level one presentation i can easily use this for presenting my things so how can i use that okay let's talk about how can we really use that if you never use this tool i definitely suggest you strongly recommend it go and download it after you watch this video you can download color splasher that's a great tool to use if you want to watch more in-depth video of how the color splasher works and more different methods you can click on the pop-up link above or click on the link in the description below we have published great plugins that will improve your workflow and move your Revit skills into the next level. So therefore, I definitely suggest you to watch that video. If I go walls and if I go types from here, I can actually select how I want to color those walls depending on the type. So here I will choose something, for example, let's say this wall is made for fire resin. I will go with some kind of pastel reddish, like pink, uh, and then I will go something of the metal stars. I will go something with a purple and I will go the brick with some kind of orange, let's say. And if I do apply the color set, I will be able to visualize where is my fire walls located, which of the walls are containing EIFS finishes, the insulated finish. And which of them are having a break finish. So I can easily present it, make a conversation with my colleague and or a consultant. So that's really a great approach to phase things up. Lastly, let's move on to the rooms and areas, which I will be covering you very quickly so you understand more how they work. First of all, rooms and areas have specific computation. Make sure that you understand them make sure that you set it up. We don't have the time to go into much into those things, but basically whether it's only areas you're looking for or volumes as well, you can choose. And you can choose if it's located on the finish or in wall center line or course layer or course center. So depending on what your needs are. But right now, if I go, it's my, is actually currently my rooms are located finish. Meaning if I go with a room right away, I can select my finish. The blue light color will be located there and I'm just placing my room one and room two. So that's straightforward. The next thing is how we can do areas. That's a little bit more interesting because I can have more control and more flexibility because my rooms are generally dependent on the uh, enclosure. So room boundings that are located, for example, this is a room bounding wall. That's why I have over here four room bounding walls and my room is located over there. If I delete this room and make sure that this wall is not a room bounding, I can see that my actually, this room is going to cover both entire floor plan because this wall is not anymore room bounding. But if I do it room bounding, you can see that it stops there. So I will go back to the room. Obviously this is two and I will go move on with areas. So the areas, would be by clicking over here and you need to first area plan. Are you looking for a gross building or rentable area? 
a lot of people ask me because there are some partition walls that you need to take half of the wall as a room bounding, but maybe for the exterior walls, you want to go all the way out to the exterior. So how do you set it up in with rooms? I generally suggest you set it up with areas because with rooms, it, there are the rules are a little bit more rigid and it's useful for room a meter square or square feet. So you have to focus more on the rooms when you use rooms. But if you are more focusing on actually getting the gross area of the building or of the unit, what you can do is you can click area, area plan, gross building, go ahead with this one. Uh, level one, it's so simple. It asks you automatically create the boundary lines. I never say yes. Okay, I, I wouldn't say never. 95% of the time I say no to that. If unless if I'm very much in hurry and I want to just quickly check if everything's okay, and I click yes, because the, the reason is that it doesn't always pick up the best thing that I'm looking for. It takes more time for me to understand and check. Instead, I say no, and I can easily say what I want to pack it up. So I can say, okay, here I'm looking for, uh, by the way, you can say apply rules and you can just check it out. So you don't want to apply the rules of the area uh, computations. So I can just select this part, this part, this part. I can also go in the center line of the wall or core boundary if I, I can go more in the fine detail and I can choose exactly what I'm looking for. But right now I'm just trying to explain you that you have more flexibility there and you can choose as, as you wish. So I will just undo that and then I will move that down and I will just go ahead and trim that piece. Once your boundaries are fine, then you can just click on the area over here and then you can just put your room area or like the unit area, whatever area that you're looking for. So maybe you have apartments and you cover multiple rooms and multiple boundaries and share some um, compartment walls or you know share walls from the center line, whatever you prefer. And then you say, obviously you need one. And then you can go in the schedules. You can easily go ahead and click on the schedules and select areas, gross building, and then select what kind of name, area, type, and so forth and so forth. So this was a great approach to cover how floor plans work and a little bit more knowledge on how rooms and areas work and some other components, some other details. So if you'd like to learn more about Revit and BAM, don't forget to hit subscribe icon below because we are sharing out of BIM and Revit related content for you. Don't forget to turn your notification bell on. See you next time.